Good morning. Stephen Allen. Good morning. Tell them where you are so everyone understands. I'm on the road in Indianapolis, Indiana. So you're driving right now. I'm I'm riding. I'm being chauffeured. Oh, yes, yes. Trish Church is driving Steve right now, and Steve is on the call, and he's going to leave us halfway through because of a, a prior obligation, but we're we're grateful to have you for the time you can give us this morning, honey. Well, thank so, you. So here's the class topic today. It's called the Y's, W-H-Y apostrophe S, to Y's, which is W-I-S-E. And I, and I love that because there's so many times when when we, we don't understand as leaders why our team is is not getting it. They don't get it. I thought they'd get it by now. And one of the reasons they don't get it is because we haven't taught them um, how to think in our business. And how to think means is we have to help them understand why we put the systems why we put the system and processes in place to 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 begin this journey in their careers and have our salon support that and we put the whys in place to help facilitate um, their journey into success. We do this not because we just feel like it. There's thought and we put thought and energy and and time into making these decisions for our business and we need to be able to help people understand the whys and once again when we give them the whys it makes them wise. Steve we've talked about this a lot over the years. A lot I mean Simon Sinek the author um, S-I-N-E-K has a a book out that says start with the why and 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 what really is the truth is, is that your salon guest your customer buys into your why that that's really the only thing that they can the only thing that they want to buy into is is why did you do it why did you why did you position it that way and subsequently your team buys into the why as well and not only do, do the why's make you wise w i s e but but they also that's that's what helps to bring together the group as a team because they and, come together for that common why. And you know what, Steve? I mean, what happened? Did, we, did you? I'm, I'm did we, still here. It's just sorry, you got a little uh, static on the line. Okay. So when we look at the first slide we're showing is called the biggies, and once again, it's those those four key elements: the mission, the vision, the non-negotiables, and the career path. And what you're going to see on this, and every time Steve's in front of our company. In some way, he always states why we did this. The mission is the why and the what. Why are we doing this and what is it that we're creating? The vision is the who, where, when, and how. The non-negotiables are the what and the why. And the career path is the how and the why. And I wanted you to see on this is how many times the why is listed. It's listed Mm -hmm. under mission. It's it's listed under non-negotiables and it's listed on career path and so that means that it's our responsibility as leaders to continually say why we did this salon and what we want to become as a result of it why we have these non-negotiables in place and why we have the career path in place because we're committed to developing our team and making them more successful and taking them to a place they wouldn't go on their own and that's our responsibility and you will grow tired and this is what you always say Steve you'll go tired I'm sorry why don't you say it well you'll go you'll grow tired of of telling your story telling your why stating your mission long before your people grow tired of it that's why they joined you that's what they want they want you to continually reiterate that and, and and it's it's one of the most important things we say all the time that the that the uh the founder the owner uh is the keeper of the vision and and as the keeper of the vision it's yours to restate again and again and again and again literally every single time that you gather there in some be, way yeah okay so let's go in 
the reason we do this, and I'm, I'm trying to say, you know, people say, I just feel like I say it over and over again. If your people know the why, they can give you the results. They can't give you the results if they don't understand. I mean, there's times, I can tell you, because Steve is such a visionary and a thinker, there's times he's carrying it all in his head. And his words need to be said to our staff. His words need to be understood and embraced by our team. And a true understanding will create connection and relatability to the cause. If they don't understand we're trying to change an industry, if, we don't under if our staff doesn't understand that we are trying to be the most progressive education company to develop hairdressers in the industry, that we want to be world famous on, at that regard, if we don't say that to everyone, how are they going to relate to what our cause is? Well, Terry, when I hear you say that, I'm, I'm thinking about a, a book that I'm reading right now, which is by uh, um, John, oh, heck, the guy I'm going to see next week, Terry. Maxwell. John Maxwell. Um, and it's everyone communicates, few connect. And and I think that your your why and your mission is all about creating that connection. And and, and that's what's going to connect with people, not necessarily anything else that, that you do. Uh, if it's not connected to that why, if it's not connected to the mission as to why you did it, people are they're just they're not going to be able to connect and and that's really the premise of the book is that, that we all communicate we all say things we all listen to one degree or another but there's a difference between that and true connection true connection with your team true connection with your with your salon guest uh, and in your in your marketplace in your communities uh, I think we I think we've said something um, about <clears throat> trying to find a way to find a couple of words that, that support your why and that 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 it'll spark people into coming uh, to attention again. I remember working for Pillsbury and I'll never forget my first day with them and I heard hot food, cold drinks. And it, it almost made everyone stand and become alert because a manager would walk through the restaurant and say, hot food, cold drinks. That meant Whoever's closest is running that hot food and whoever is closest is running those cold fresh drinks. And it, it might sound simple, but it helped everyone understand we're here to create the best dining experience for the guest at this price point. And we want to wow our customers. And just those two quick four words, hot food, cold drinks, you automatically looked up and, and said, is someone close enough or is it me? You automatically knew, pay attention and respond, because it all, it all um, uh, assisted the, the mission and the vision and what we were responsible to do. And I'm not kidding you, just hearing that, even now, if I was somewhere and I heard hot food, cold drinks, I'd probably pick my head up and look, what do I need to do right now? That's how much if those words brought us to attention to, to make us focus on the customer's experience. So what are those... What are those things you want to say that would bring everyone's attention back? Because can you can you have people? I mean, I can remember back then where you still smoked in the back of the house and the break area was still smoking. And if someone heard hot food, cold drinks, they'd put that cigarette out right away and run to. Now, did you have those people that thought, well, someone else will get it first? Those people weren't a good fit for us because they didn't understand the mission. A true understanding will create connection and relatability to the cause. And there's nothing more true than stating why we're there every day. Is it to do great hair? Of course. But a lot of places do great hair. What are we trying to create and with our service experience that our customers feel at home and that they're in good hands with our salon? The whys. Let's go through. You. This might sound... Um, a beginner level of, of whys, but let's go through some of these. Why do we greet like this? A brand new employee could say, why do we shampoo like this? Why are these our prices? Why do we not discount? And you need to have the speech, and there's more questions to add to this list, the speech that says the answer to these whys. Why must we quote service price first? 
Why do we need to be unified as a team in our cutting and our, and our service techniques? Why education? Why team meetings? Why leadership is needed in a creative setting? Why can't we just be artists? Why did you pick this location? Why did you name the salon ABC Salon? Why did you want to become a hairdresser? Why did you want to become an owner of this business? Why do you choose and how did you choose these product lines to connect with? Why do we have dress code? Why do we have non-negotiables? Why do I need to ever raise my prices? And these, all these questions, and there's a whole lot more whys that a staff member needs to understand to get in your mind and teaching them how to think in your business. But if we just go with, why did you pick this location? Can you give the speech or just say, well, yeah, I was looking for a place and you know, it was close to home. That's not enough of a why. You had a vision when you saw it. You started dreaming about what it could become. During the, the build out, you were excited. Talk about the whys to help them understand. And, and once again, if you go back to that page, a true understanding will create connection and relatability to the cause. You want them to dream with you about the future. And every speech you give as an owner should indicate that. If I say to Steve right now, Steve, why did you want education to be a core value of our company? Okay. So my immediate answer would be because it touches the heart of the hairdresser. Hairdressers experience first through their hands. And I've always believed that knowledge equals confidence. To know something gives you confidence, and when you act on it, it brings power. And so uh, PSC, in, in its goal to change the salon industry, we knew that had to happen one hairdresser at a time. So no better way than to have the very heart and soul of what we do be education at all levels and on all topics, not just hair cutting, not just color, not just texture, but, but the business education all the way through uh, the, the salon, from the owners to the managers to the stylists to the, to the service desk, all of those areas that, that are present in a salon need to be touched. So that was 33 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it, and it hasn't changed. Now, how many times have I heard that over the, you know, the 28 years that I've known you? I have heard that over and over again, and I don't tire of it because, once again, hearing the why helps you understand and relate to the cause. It makes you proud that you're part of it. And, and some of you might say, well, you know, I can't say it like him. Yes, you can. You just haven't, you haven't understood that that's important. So the whys will make your staff absolutely wise because if, if, they, if you teach them the whys and then they go home and say, why do you have to go to another class? They'll tell their circle of, of influence and their community that they are in touch with, they'll say the whys the way you did. And that's why it's so important. I love that. Honey, you want to add anything to that? No, it's just, again, it, it, can, it can dim in your mind because that was, that was then and, and you're living in the now. But you have to be able to reconnect personally, professionally, and as a team with those basic whys, with those basic premises. Um, while, while you were talking earlier, I thought back and said, uh, I thought back and said, I wonder if, if Terry's going to ask me about why did we choose the location for the school that we chose in, in our Chicago school. And uh, I was thinking about how specifically uh, that location uh, has, how it mattered. And, and why we did it. And we did it because we wanted, a, number one, a Chicago presence. We also wanted a, a, a facility that would allow great uh, customer guest traffic because we believe that, uh, that high guest traffic creates a great hairdresser. And then also uh, why where we're at right there is we're on the campus UIC, which is the sixth most diverse campus in, in America. And we felt that diversity and working with a diverse client base uh, would would definitely help to create brilliant hairdressers. And so it, in one way, it's four walls. But in another way, 
there's a very strong why for why we put why we positioned it where we did. Well, and and you can you can have and understand you need as an owner to defend your why. And why do you have a dress code? Well, I like black. That's not enough. We have a dress code in place so our guest at a glance will know who's working here and who's here to serve them. We also have a dress code of an example, let's say, all black, because we want to highlight the makeup and the hair of all the hairdressers because they all wear have color on their hair. And black becomes a great frame to see that uh, the hair that's in the salon. I mean, there's there's so many ways that you can say it, but you can't feel guilty about your whys, and you can't feel ashamed of your whys, and you can't feel like this is the wrong why. It's not. When it's your why, it's right. And and that's what you need to defend, even if they don't like it. If they understand it, like why do we have bedtime at home? Why do we now have a new rule that all the phones have to be put aside during dinner time? We need to defend that as parents. And I don't feel guilty for that. And but I, I also know that the answer, because I said so, is never going to fly. I have to give the meaning behind it, even when I don't feel like it. So you say the whys, and you say the whys to develop the mind and the talent. And the whys support the brain muscle memory. They have to be able to rely on what they know, the why we have the dress code in place. It allows them to hear the speech that you gave them in their mind, and then they now can say the speech to over time and they become teachers of your words not only to their family but to your customers that's the beauty of it too is the customer and they need to understand that you believe so much in it that they start repeating your words to the customer and the customer sees that you're all on the same page and it, it creates a unified area It's so true. Last night we held a we were part of the National Open House for Paul Mitchell Schools and we had stations set up through the school to be able to take perspectives, people that are thinking about coming to cosmetology school. They went from one station to the next. And as they went as they went to a station, um, there would be some of our staff there, but there would also always be a future professional who volunteered mm, to, nice. to be there and talk about their experience in our school. And I was talking with a 50-year veteran of the cosmetology industry after she'd been to each one of the stations. And she said, you know, Steve, she said, you, it's clear that you've got it going on here because I felt like no one spoke from a script. Everyone spoke from their heart. And everyone was on the same page. And she said, it, it "Just a wonderful, wonderful experience." And and that's because why we do it, who we are, has been repeated over and over and over again um, as part of the education and training. And, and uh, I too listened to some of the future professionals speak, and as well as our staff. And I was so well. Proud. You were on a you were on a high last night. Absolutely. Absolutely. It was wonderful, and, but that's what you, that's what you hope for, you know, when you when you organize a business, because the reality is there's only a certain number of people that you can personally touch in the business that, as far as end consumer goes. So you have to rely on other people to be able to represent you, tell your story, tell the story of the business, and 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 and, and explain the whys. It's and in their hand. If, well, and if you're not saying it enough meaning you thought, okay, I just have to stay it in the first couple of years and this is year 10. If you're not saying it still at year 10, what you said in the first couple of years has became very diluted. And now it doesn't even sound the same. And that's when sometimes we meet with owners that say, this isn't the business I wanted. It's now become something that I never had a vision for. Well, what, what usually happened is, is maybe their wives were challenged maybe they stopped saying the whys and because of that there was no connection with the new talent that came in and now you don't now you don't like the business you've created and can it be turned back around sure it can be 
absolutely can be. But you got to get back to that place where you first agreed with yourself and, and had an agreement with what you were going to create and go back and support that. And does it mean sometimes losing some talent? We've talked about this on um, many uh, e-learnings in the past. Yes, it may be. It may be at the risk of losing some talent. And that's okay to get the business back and have you fall in love again. You know, as a parent, because I said so, because it's what is best for you, because you will thank me someday, I bet all of you on the phone who are parents have said this, because it will create peace in our house, because it will make you better, because I'm responsible for your safety. I've said all these. Steve's said all these. And we will continue to say this over and over again. As a leader, some of this holds almost exactly the same verbiage because it's what I feel is best for you in your career, because you will thank me someday, because it will create a peaceful salon, because it will make you better, and because I'm responsible for your safety and your success. Do we have to redirect? Sure. Do we have to make shifts? Yes. I mean, even if, you know, I think about the things that, that we have to do at, at PSC. We've got a young lady downstairs right now that's gone through our training, and and her direct trainer today I said how is how is such and such doing and she said she's good and I said when is she ready to fly on her own and she said you know probably by the end of this month and I said get her on the saddle get her on there um, we have to start making adjustments but the only way we can make adjustments is if we know what our needs are we got to see what what her work is and because we're responsible for her safety and her success here so we've got to get her on the horse and it might not be perfect right away, but we need to create and be willing to risk a little bit of an uncomfortable moment to make her what she can become here. And that's what we committed to. So sometimes we don't move fast enough or we don't say what we need to say. And so the difference in a nutshell is is we wouldn't hesitate for a second to do the right thing, say the right thing, stop something or run after them or interfere, interject for your child. We wouldn't we wouldn't hesitate for a second. However, in business, the amount of times that we've had to say to other leaders, counterparts, directors in our organization, managers at a salon, a coach, a trainer, did you have this discussion with them? Did you have this discussion to help them understand that their outcomes aren't supporting your whys? Have you had this discussion? And nine times out of ten, it's no. I didn't know how to say it. I didn't know what to say. I didn't want to hurt their feelings. I didn't want, and, and I, that I didn't want, I didn't want is getting in the way of developing great people. And, and it's getting in the way of you having the salon that you envisioned when you opened it. Steve? Well, it's true. And sometimes sometimes it's a matter of... I even uh, say it to you, honey. Absolutely. Because you don't be, like it. No. I, and, you know, in, in, in my case, the conversation that I don't have is usually uh, because I'm, I'm playing those conversations over and over and over again in my mind because many times I want to wait until it's perfect, until I know exactly what I want to say. I don't, I don't trust getting into a conversation and then working to make it right. And, and so um, I'm, I'm sometimes too late to the party with what needs to be said. But I'm blessed because I have you that's early to the party, and then my job is to clean it up clean it up and pump them back up and let them know they're loved. <laughs> but wait a minute. Now, see, I always get the bad rap on this. There's two parts to this. There could be there could be weaknesses on my part going too fast. And there could be weaknesses on your part going too slow. The just right is, is, is difficult. However, I think sometimes if you don't address it when it's, when it's in front of you, you miss the opportunity to really help someone see that they could have done it differently or said it you know, differently. There's a, there's a phrase that goes, if you do the things you need to do when you need to do them, soon you'll be able to do the things you want to do when you want to do them. And I think that those those things that need to be said or need to do's, and, and certainly um, it, it's an area 
that I need to improve on, and it's an area that I think many owners need to improve on uh, because we all want to get to that point where we can do the things we want to do. And, and in a business sense, what we want to do is have that amazing, fantastic uh, business that's a pillar in the community. And so um, uh, it, it's just a, it's a learning process, but, but there does need to be some urgency added to it. I, I love that. What, I need Go ahead. to uh, excuse myself. And good day. Good day. I've long. got. All right. Good. I will Thank cover you, and um, talk to you later, honey. Goodbye. All right. All right. So let's go into and talk about coaches because I love studying coaches in sports, as you know, because we have to. I mean, the, the cameras are on them. They're they're watching the coaches during the game. Can you imagine if there were cameras watching you run your business, like? What is such and such doing right now? How is she responding to this? Or how is he doing with that? You know, they, they're under the limelight. And it's not as if they have a hiding place that they're coaching this football game or basketball game from underneath the bleachers. Everyone sees how they're responding and what they're thinking during celebrations and also when someone fumbles. or We have to watch how that coach responds. So anyway, coaches, when they are entering a new season, they've got to create a plan. And what is your plan for this new season. Now, something I'm thinking about a lot is the beauty industry clearly has two seasons, spring and fall. If you follow the publications, the biggest publications on in the magazines are their spring release and definitely their fall release. And we have to study, study, study. And what do we want to create for our two seasons? How do we capitalize on the fact that there's two seasons of publications in the minds of the consumer? So how are we going to study? What are we going to do during this time? Are we going to do a spring release and a fall release? Are we going to do the spring and fall um, must-haves? Are we going to create an open house for spring and fall in our salons? Uh, are we, can we capitalize on all the dollars that are spent, all the dollars that the major companies and the publications spend to release spring and fall? We need to study, study, study as a salon and put those ideas and facts out into the business because it's not just about clothing. It's all about the makeup trends, the nail trends, and certainly the wardrobe trends, the fragrance trends, and, and there's a fragrance wardrobe, a shoe wardrobe, and so on and so forth. Okay, and I think I've said this before, but I would assign a publication to everyone on staff. You've got You've got in style. You've got bizarre. You've got Vogue. You've got uh, so on, Marie Claire, and you've got glamour, and so on and so forth. And then we bring those ideas back and say, okay, let's have a brainstorming session on how we're going to implement this into the business. All right, scouting. What are we looking for, and what do you need right now? If a coach is looking for a quarterback, that's exactly what they're going after. So. What are you scouting for right now for the rest of this year? Are we still looking? And most, the last class I taught, I think that between all the owners and managers in the room, we were looking for 24 people. And then I said, okay, what is your, you're looking for 24 staff right now. What is your plan of attack to look for these 24 staff? And, and no one really had a plan. They knew they needed people, but they didn't have a plan. Now, there is no way any college coach, high school coach, or professional coach could tell the people that they're responsible to, do you have a quarterback? No, we, we just haven't had time to find one. Why do we do that in our businesses? We didn't have time to find one. And we need to have players in the right position. And the right position could be where they're located in the salon, the noise footprint that our staff has when our people look in our business, what does it look like from the street? Um, that's really, really critical. The practice and the scrimmage before the season starts, they're going to practice and they're going to scrimmage and they're going to critique and make adjustments. How often are we practicing and scrimmaging? Or are we always playing the game live? Coaches understand that. Okay, next one. They create a playbook. They prepare the players' minds to compete, physical strength and mental strength. You think about the physical strength, and, and in our business, it's it's the pace and being able to be on our feet 10, 
eight, ten hours a day. There's physical strength there. There's body positioning. There's um, just the the pace of being full out, our scheduling and everything. Then there's the mental strength, being able to entertain for those eight or ten hours with a positive attitude, a pleasant personality. And that's not easy. How do we prepare the players' minds to compete? We need to redirect, redirect, redirect. We need to create timeouts. We need to celebrate. If this isn't working, make adjustments again. You know, and, and you can watch a football game and see a timeout, or you can watch a basketball game and say, oh, my gosh, the wheels are falling off. How do we create a timeout right now to say we need to re redirect? When does it look good to you, and when does it look sloppy to you? And when and how do you make adjustments throughout the day? Is there a key person that helps you make those adjustments if you're behind the chair? And the scoreboard always communicates the next move. So the scoreboard in a football game might be the time left on the clock. And if we've only got two minutes left, we have to go to our two-minute offense or we have to go to our two-minute defense or what are we going to do or we're going to do a onside kick. The scoreboard communicates the next move. What's the scoreboard communicating for us in the salon? And ours is the dollar per guest in service, the dollar per guest in take home, the guest count, established guest, new guest, and the reschedule percentage. You want to know this throughout the day. What is our guest count <clears throat> Excuse me for the day? If we have room for 80 hours of hair today, and we're only doing 25 hours, many of our, our software systems now will tell us a week out, a month out, what is our occupancy going to be? How are we responding to us? Because that's our scoreboard. Guest count is our scoreboard. Dollar per guest in service. We can see what we're almost anticipating on the schedule. Don't live in the day try to live a week or two weeks out as an owner so you know what your next move is. Every single day that reschedule percentage is creating traffic for you in the future and if we're only running at 20-25% that, that's alarming and that's scary and we need to be able to call those timeouts and do those adjustments like we discussed. You know the next move in, in for a coach might be the playing time like if you are gosh, you're on fire, we're going to keep you on the court. If you are just in a slump, we, we might pull you back and put you on the bench for a little bit. And maybe your head's in the way. We're going to look at the points. We're going to look at the shooting percentage and, and see what's happening. I mean, I might as a coach on the bench say, God, what is going on with John John Doe? What is, what is his problem today? He just is not in the game. Pull him out. Let's put someone else in that's got... A fresh mind and fresh legs. In the salon, we're looking at the, the hours in the salon. What are those dollars, that rescheduling percentage? And if someone just doesn't have it today, it's just not, we need to say, get your head back in the game. We can tell when someone's on fire and in the zone, and we can tell when they're struggling. The playing disciplines. One of the things that I'm I'm watching right now, and I, I love this time of year when when you're seeing something like uh, the um, oh my god the California team, the Golden State Warriors are are going to beat. It appears they're going to beat the record of most wins in a season, and that's going to beat the Bulls' record. Why is this team working so well together? What's so magical about them? What are their playing disciplines? their playing disciplines. Do they arrive early? Do they network as a team? Are they mentally prepared? And I heard that Steph shoots a thousand shots before the game even takes place. Their workout, the quality of their meals, the quality of their sleep. And, and I want to know, what are your playing disciplines at the salon? Does the team arrive early? Do they network together? Are they mentally prepared for a very busy day? How are they setting up before the game starts? What is their quality of, of sleep? Are they ready to be on their feet and on for 10 hours? I mean, those are, those are big things for us to know what our playing disciplines are 
because business is playing the game of business. It's no different than how they need to prepare. Theirs is only full out for two and a half hours. Ours is full out sometimes 40 hours a week. What are our playing disciplines? And do we have the capacity to be full out 40 hours a week? Now, the whys, for us to be wise as owners, we need to be asking a lot of questions. This goes both ways. We need to be asking a lot of questions to understand our staff. Repeat it back to me so I'm sure you understand the whys. Why do we have dress code here? Why do we, um, why did I choose this location? Why are you going to earn a price increase? You start asking them and ask them the why so you are checking for knowledge to understand that they know how we think. We can also say, why did you make that decision just now? Why did you choose not to make a decision to upgrade that service? Why are you always arriving to work late or arriving to work early? Why do you seem unhappy? Why do you seem anxious? Why have you lost your excitement? So. Our whys have to go both ways. You know, there's a, there's a reason professional athletes have so many um, coaches and trainers in their life. You know, they have their, their overall coach in baseball. Then they might have a hitting coach, a pitching coach, a defensive coach, a fielding coach. And then they also have their trainer and their physical therapist. And they also usually have a sports counselor that helps them because what they do isn't easy. I mean, the stakes are really, really high. Well, I think what we do every day in life, the stakes are really high too. Have you ever thought about bringing a professional counselor in for your staff or, or saying they've lost their enthusiasm or they've got some things in the way that when they come to work, they, they can't separate the two and it's getting in the way of them being successful. And so, your questions need to go both ways so you can get in the heads of your staff. Not to get in like a, a drama way, I'm not saying that, but to say, is there anything you need from me? What is your hang up? Like, are, do you have, why do you have such a fear of color? And they might have some, some bottlenecks or uh, things that are in the way that are, are preventing them to bring out the greatness in themselves. And so, Sometimes you have to get them on the saddle in, in a way. Or maybe they need extra one-on-one -on -one training. Or maybe they need some testing. Maybe they need some more visuals. Maybe they need some cheat sheets. Um, maybe the next for the next three weeks that they formulate, we're going to make them talk about their formulation out loud so we can understand the whys they made that decision. Ooh, I think that I've got 20 minutes left. I think that when we look at the whys, to help us know what we need to do to bring out the greatness in people. Owning and developing talent is, is, um, is just one part of it, technically. But the dialogue, the service, everything else that goes into that is really just as equally important. And it's hard to to talk about the things when there might be something in the way. And so we have to say, what's in the way right now that's not allowing us to keep a customer? What's in the way right now that we've given you 150 customers and only 20 of them have been retained? We have to figure that out and we have to, we have to get down to the root of it. There's times that even at PSC I say, why isn't why isn't the scoreboard telling us what our intentions are? I think I've said this to many of you over and over again is, is our execution might not be perfect every day, but our intentions are perfect every day. And sometimes I think if our intentions are this good to change an industry and to help a hairdresser and to partner with salons, why aren't the results reflective of that? And then you have to go back and I have to keep asking, okay, are we doing this enough? Are we doing this? Have we created this? Are we following our system? Are we honoring our system? Are we being full out? On a scale of 1 to 10, what is our effort level? You have to keep asking the whys too so you can make good decisions. And that's, that's what's exciting about business is we re recreate ourselves. We have to ask a lot of questions of ourselves.
and that's not always the easiest thing to do because sometimes we don't like the answers. I certainly don't. And but the answers will help us make better decisions. Brian, can we open this up to questions? And how do I see the questions? Yes, ma'am, we can. Um, if anyone has any questions, uh, there is a chat window uh, at on the um, control panel. Or, or give us you... comments too, because we, or do um, because we want to know what what this has meant to you. It's a little heavier of a topic. But I, I think it's important because I know even our staff, we can have people with us 15 years and maybe they forgot the why or hadn't thought about the why. One of the things that the Ritz-Carlton does every single day is they speak about one of their whys, which they call, um, oh, I forget what their 20 disciplines are, but they talk about a why every day. So every month, at least once, the whys are restated and they're they're coming back and looking at that they never want to lose sight of the whys and PSC we call them the 20 basics and we don't talk about them enough and while I was creating this is it's just because Steve and I know them and our director team knows them what about the person that started with us last Monday does she know them and doesn't she need to hear it and doesn't she need to understand why they were put in place in the first place yes Anything for us, Brian? Uh, no, ma'am, not at this time. Well, they've got to be thinking something, I hope. What else am I thinking about? I'm reading the book now called Will It Make the Boat Go Faster? I think we talked about this the last one. It's, it's by Ben Hunt Davis and Harriet Beveridge. And it's the Olympic winning strategies for everyday success. I'm telling you, I am having a ball with this book. And it's it's the question, you know, I, I kept saying, what is going to be our question? Will it make the boat go faster? Well, guess what PSC's question is? Will it make the boat go faster? Because we all understand what it means. And so that's our question. Will it? How? Why will it make the boat go faster? Why does the boat need to go faster? And I'm just I'm just having a ball with this. So I got it on Amazon paperback version, and uh, it's 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 really really good. And there's no hiding place. Chapter four is called BS filters, the things that get in the way that that we could BS our way out of it. Like oh I I we don't have the right customers coming in, or you're not advertising enough, or we're not doing this. This, the, the authors refer to this as BS filters, things that we can put in there that we almost buy into for a second that really has no bearing. Can you imagine Disney saying no one likes, well, people are tired of Mickey Mouse. They don't like Mickey Mouse anymore. That's why we don't have the traffic we have. That just would never be the case. But someone could say it out loud. You know, like Mickey Mouse needs a new look. He needs a, a, a update. So... The BS filters, what are the BS filters in, in our businesses? Sometimes it's, um, maybe it's start time, end time. Maybe it's uh, that artist uh, really didn't make impact. People can, um, or people don't know that artist, so that's why we're not selling education. The BS filters, if it's the right decision for the company, we can't get sucked in to those BS filters, we have to be able to defend our decision making. What else do I want to talk about today? I think I'm going to let them go early if no one has any questions. Did they like this topic? Do they understand that sometimes the owner's carrying the the whys only in their head? I know I know I've got to drag out the whys from Steve sometimes. And and he even said sometimes the the whys he's processing. And we have to realize that we as a company have to hear that and never grow sick of the wise PSC was started in 1983 and has it evolved with technology and changes in the industry, sure, but our core values haven't. They're right where they need to be. And we need to fight for the hairdresser on a daily basis. With that... I have a question come in. Oh, good. Um, it's from Kathy McCarthy. 
uh, she says, uh, I think it's very important for my business partner and I to answer the whys and share with our team. I think it will remind our longtime team members to, and enlighten our new team uh, who haven't been there since the beginning. Thank you. It, and it, you're right. It, and it's so true. I mean, the older I get, I guess I, I get sick of my own voice. And But I know that when I'm with someone, I met with an educator yesterday, and I was sitting with Paulo, and the whys came up multiple times. He might not have known. I didn't say, now this is a why, I'm answering that right now. But I, I realized after writing this for, for all of you and for us, because PSC learns from this as much as anyone else does when, when these programs are, are written, is I knew I had to incorporate the whys when I was talking to Paulo yesterday. And it, it's, it's my job to say the whys. And I can't grow tired of it. I don't have that luxury to grow tired of it. Good. Brian, are we good? Yes, we also have a comment from Tammy Baker. She says, Oh, uh, good. Great job. I needed to hear it all again myself. And uh, repetition creates habit. Um, she also said that I'm going to stop the self-talk. I shouldn't, uh, in quotation marks, I shouldn't have to tell them they're adults and now they're, it's their jobs. And they know their jobs. I agree with that. That, that self-talk, is that what she referred to? Yes. You know, I, I think that I, I wish all the directors were, were on here now because all of us get in our own way. All, all of us get in our own, our, our own way. We know. If, if I had to take a private conversation with even the people that report directly to me and say, what could we be working on with this individual? That list would be boom, 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 boom. Very easy. Then they get face to face with someone and it doesn't come out. There's not as much conviction when it's said to them that I believe so much that this could make a difference for you. It comes across as a suggestion versus this is where we're going to take you. It comes off as, I think we should try this, and this is a little suggestion, and maybe it'll work or maybe it won't work. We don't have the conviction necessary sometimes. And our people want that. I mean, can you imagine a coach calling time out and saying, you know, I really think we should hold on to the ball, and, and I really think that um, we should work a little harder. No, they bring them over there and say, come on now, we've got this. Get your head where it needs to be. There's only five more minutes in this game, be full out, let's go make it happen and let's go. And I don't think we as as owners, business owners, realize the responsibility of coaching the way it needs to be done. They need to fire up. They need to be fired up and they want to be fired up and that's our responsibility. And don't hold back, especially when you can see what someone can become. Don't hold back. I was up with our salespeople last um on Friday and uh, just looking at them and saying we have such a responsibility let's not let's not cheapen who we are because we're not living up to that responsibility we have a responsibility now let's go make some noise and our noise footprint has to be match what our intentions are and sometimes our noise footprint doesn't match our intentions and I can tell you as an owner that drives me the most nuts is what we're capable of versus what we are and our job as leaders is to push the company to higher levels. What are we capable of? And let's get there. I don't think any of you on the phone are done yet. I don't think any of you are on the phone saying, okay, that's, that's our ceiling. Thank you, everyone, and good day. We're going to be at this level and maintain this level the rest of our years in business. No. It might be a great number, but I think we're always saying, what else can we become? And, and that's what's exciting about it. And when you state the whys, where else can we go? Why can we go further? Why can we make a more of an impact? What is our footprint going to be in 2016? And what are we going to do to prepare for 2017? Um, you know, I, I make a list of every department in in the company and in ours so I look at I look at order fulfillment I look at customer service I look at the finance department I look at sales our store our education our IT and I keep making a list of how is it working 
what could be our what could we be working on and then you start dreaming as you look at your departments so when you look at yours whether you look at and and then I make a list of the people development the systems and the services development under all those all those headings and if I look at 2015 it was a it was a pretty aggressive list of what we wanted to get done and can I tell you we got it done not every one of them, but they're carried over to 2016. But my job is to say, where where are we going to go with this? How much better can we become? Are we going to be a better version of us? And and then my job is to say, why we're going to why we're going to make these improvements? Why are we going to develop our people more? Why are we going to add these services? Why we're going to increase our systems? I have to be able to defend the why on making us a better version of ourselves. Okay, everyone. Go do the whys to make you and your staff wise. If you have any questions or anything that you need help on this, don't hesitate to call. We're so proud of, of what you're becoming, and we're so proud that you trust PSC to be one of your partners. It's, um, it's an honor for us to serve you. Thank you, Brian, and um, once again, have a great week, everyone, and we'll see, we'll see you shortly. Bye-bye.